Let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Our learnings from our EV Jeep conversion project so far and what we would do different. Hi everyone, happy new year and welcome back to our EV conversion series. As we've teased in the last video, we were taking a little break and everybody who follows me on social media knows why I'm a mom now. As you can imagine, this put our project a little bit on hold and besides maintaining our full-time jobs and building up a family, there was just no time for the Jeep anymore. But we're super excited to get back into this in a little bit different setting and share more with you as we go. Today's video is all about the lessons that we have learned so far and what we would do different. Before I get into the more technical parts, I want to share the most important learning for me in this project, which is more about the team and the expectations. Both my husband and I were going into this with our industry background. We're really working in the EV industry. We're seeing all the trends and our expectations and requirements for this project were kind of reflecting that. High voltage motor, water cooled batteries, DC fast charging. So really the requirements that you see from major OEMs. But those high requirements paired with the fact that we're just a couple working in the garage essentially didn't match up. So we completely underestimated the amount of work that it takes. And you know, it's possible with a bigger team, with time. But for us on hindsight, our first learnings is we should have done a way simpler conversion with way lower requirements, meaning lower range, lower voltage, and no cooling for the batteries. Now let's talk a little bit about the more technical side of things. Our second learning is all about the batteries. This is a part where I don't regret anything because we've learned so much, but as you know, we really made our own batteries. It was motivated by the fact that we wanted to reuse existing batteries because since we're giving the Jeep already a second life, why not do the same thing with batteries? So we're always looking at reusing batteries and with our 400 volt system, the limited space in the Jeep or range of 130 miles, the only way to go at that time was build our own batteries. And while this was really a fun learning experience, the effort of separating all these slices and then repacking all the slices was way too high and had lots of uncertainty, especially for safety. So if we started from scratch, we would start with a lower voltage motor, which would have enabled us to reuse Tesla modules and not build our own. Now, another learning on the battery side of things was that the thermal management was so complex. Trying to do water cooling, which is only needed for battery life and DC fast charging was really something we didn't need. And it made our life very complicated. And then on top of that, to separate the batteries into three different entities, one in the engine compartment, one in the fuel tank area, and one behind the back seat added a lot of complexity. So again, these requirements are really reflecting industry trends, but we're an overkill for our hobby EV conversion project. Next up is a major learning, and this is about the motor we chose together with the control system. So basically everything about the electric drivetrain. We really put a lot of thought into this, but the Cascadia Motion Motor is an amazing product, but it's oversized for our conversion. And the needed 400 volts DC significantly added to the complexity of the battery, driving us into custom modules. We were really also underestimating the integration work that it takes to connect the motor inverter with the control system that we got from AEM. We were more thinking this is ready to go and plug and play, but it was really a lot of work to figure out how it all works together, the connectors and all the programs. So probably in hindsight, a lower voltage motor and just a simple control unit would have done it too. Another decision for the electric drivetrain, and this is something where my hubby and I have a little bit different opinion, is removing the transmission. We were going back and forth with the transmission, but finally decided to remove it. And of course that added so much complexity again. And while we're super proud of the solution we have come up with, we now think, or actually hubby now thinks, that we should have left the transmission in as the interface to the transfer case and the complete drivetrain would have been so much easier. So a much easier route would have been a simple DC motor with the stock transmission in second gear. Okay, so the last point I want to mention in this video is what I call the upgrade to the monster truck. 
I think you all know that the initial dream and intention I had was creating an electric version of the Gilmore Girls Jeep. But I think over time, we really got a little bit carried away. And especially when we were invited to SEMA, we changed direction because we wanted to have something really fancy to showcase there. In the rush of getting our prototype done, paired with some sponsorships, we ended up with an amazing monster tonker truck that hubby really likes a lot but it definitely led us down a different path so bringing it all together on hindsight we should have started with way lower requirements since we're doing this for the first time in our garage for a gilmore girls jeep like we have dreamed of a lower voltage motor would do it together with probably some tesla modules and maybe you want to leave in your transmission make it a simple conversion to start with it's already complex enough, but we've learned so much and we continue to do so. And we're bringing you along again. Next time I'll get into a topic. I got lots of questions along the way, and this is the cost of our conversion. I'm sure you will be surprised and you don't want to miss that. Bye.